have seemed to be in video footage sitting behind Republican frontrunner Donald Trump at a rather controversial rally that happened in Fayetteville, North Carolina. If you'll notice, I'm the only African American in the camera shot, and I'm pretty sure that Mr. Trump had no idea that the independent candidate was observing him at work. Let me say from the beginning, I am not a Trump supporter. I had to see it for myself. We all know how the media can mislead us with sound bites and video clips. And what I witnessed in Fayetteville, North Carolina, the multitude of people who were ejected from the Crown Coliseum simply for disagreeing with Mr. Trump and his continually egging on of the crowd uh, to get these people out of there, even when there was an assault on a young man that I personally did not see because I was too busy watching other people get thrown out all the way to the point where I had to leave my seat myself to protect a young black woman who was screaming Black Lives Matter and who was about to be grabbed by the local police department. I assisted in walking with her out so that the same thing that happened to the last black young lady wouldn't happen again. I say these things to say this to America. The Democrats, the Republicans, have concocted a system and a machine that makes you think that the only people who are running for the presidency are those that the media projects in front of you. That would be Hillary and Bernie. Who are running for the presidency are those that the media projects in front of you. That would be Hillary and Bernie. Some people would do a couple of cool gestures in order to get, you know, the facade of credibility. You know, thank you. Thank you, y'all. Thank you. Cause I almost, thank you. Thank you. Cause I almost forgot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it. My bad. I want to speak specifically for a few minutes to the leadership legislature in a state that knows me well. The good old folks down there in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I came down there the first couple of times for the first few incidents, we developed some type of relationship where I thought we had an understanding. You know, facts over feelings is not just seen on the outside here in the public. Facts over feelings is heavily circulated in the U.S. Federal Bureau of Prisons. And I salute all of my brothers that's on lockdown right about now. And it's also viewed in a lot of the state prisons. They pass it around. So I had one of those brothers reach out to me today from the prisons in South Carolina. And he sent me a picture of what they were eating. And when I looked at it, I said, well, where's the rest of the food? You gave a man a piece of bread and, and what looked like some wet soup. That's it. Now, I know that, the, that, that prison is not supposed to be a five-star room service that you can call down. But you feed your dog better than that. Please don't tell me that y'all down there starving my brothers and sisters when taxpayers pay to keep those facilities open. Or if it's a private facility, then we just need to find out who the owner is so we can pull up on them. But I'm letting it be known tonight that the information that I'm getting from the prison system in South Carolina is that you are starving the prisoners and they're sending up pictures of the bullshit that you're feeding them. You see, we never put people in cages in ancient African culture. We punish you. It was the European that comes along with this sticking somebody ass in a cage shit. So if you're going to keep putting my people who are prisoners of war into cages, you're supposed to, even under the, Gene under the Geneva Convention, feed them, give them medical care, and so forth. That's what we pay our taxes for. That's what you told me. Now we got people telling us that you down there are starving them. Do I need to come back to South Carolina? I'm pretty sure that I got some old friends that I was cool with that, that, that's in some strange places right now. Nikki Haley, you know, I can always dial your number. Both the two past governors, I still got your number. Y'all remember when y'all was kissing my ass when I came down there for Walter Scott? Oh, we got, we got along greatly, didn't we? And I wanted to speak on this because they asked me to make it public that the prisoners in the jails are not being fed. Where's the AFL so y'all when you need them? So y'all not down there feeding these boys? Mm. And do a courtesy visit. Just to walk the place and see how the boys is doing. I'm pretty sure they'd be happy to see me. 
All of you all down there that got cell phones that can reach me on my DM, and I know a lot of y'all do it. Y'all hit me up and let me know what's going on. I need to know what's happening behind them walls, okay? Because it's real easy for me just to come down there and go to jail myself, okay? Just make sure I got my... He introduced me, and you clapped. But I want you to give yourself a hand because look at the turnout, not only here, but I heard it's about 5,000 people on the other side of this bridge. Yeah. Yeah. a message not only from the United States, but to the entire globe. That when you hear about Charleston, South Carolina, you have us mistaken. We are united as the human race. To this point, you have heard what matters. Come here a second. I'm going to do this here in Charleston. I'm going to do this right here. I am going to say this to you. Stand right here. Can you hold this for me? It's not black lives that matter anymore. All lives. Whether it be behind a keyboard or a cell phone or in some dark cave somewhere, spewing your hatred, trying to keep us divided. We are the United Yeah, and the, the police were escorting them out there in Stone Mountain. Also, they're gonna be doing a march tomorrow in, in Louisville, Kentucky for quote unquote Brianna Taylor, and the police are gonna be assisting them tomorrow. And I'm saying uh, people are going to have to be very careful about, oh, do that's just what it is. We're talking about people's safety here. We're talking about people's safety. So, again, we're looking at dude's background. And a lot of stuff we, we kind of let slide. But then it gets to a point where we've got to say something. Somebody's going to have to say something. And if there's somebody who's looking and smelling like an agent, I can only sit back for so long, and I'm not going to sit back and just watch people potentially get ambushed.